welcome back to the shop and i'm just using this as a board because the camera's quite far away it's like all the way over there and um what i want to do is just use this board to help me just keep in focus all the shit so we don't get it wrong and uh what i have here whoa, whoa. get the fucker out and we need some dirt rag right far away and I'm coming back right so what we have here is a uh, fuel um, fuel pump dickhead oil pump um, so what I want to do is this is an eccentric rotor pump and I just wanted to talk a bit about these we're gonna do some more I want to do some videos about this uh, some of the geometry and so on we're gonna do a demonstration where you'll be able to see the thing turning how it works and so on basically get a, a, a a perspex or a glass cover i think i'm thinking more perspex than glass uh, glass more than perspex but anyway so basically what you have is you have a housing and then you have this pipe that goes on the bottom this is part of the siphon and so on and then you have these two passages so as you can see if i get something porky porky uh, something with color that's porky porky so you can see um we'll use this brush this paintbrush, hopefully you'll be able to see that. You can see there, let me bring you in a bit more. God, I'll talk about prepared. Right, there we go. Let's be a bit clearer for you. You can see there, hopefully, God, that's shit in it, in there, in here. And then you can see on this side and here, and these are, this is, there's a bridge here, this is blocked off. So these are two separate passages. Then you have basically a shaft, which is our shaft here and this fits on the inside like this and you can see it's got all these holes because we have some pins some basically some dowel pins not used as dowels but they are pretty much ground pins which are these bad boys um, and you can see why your bloody motorbike costs so much this is just the oil pump so you've got two uh, ground uh, dowel pins basically and uh, what we do is we stick this so this is our main rotor so this has got four lobes on it you can see there on one side it's flat on the other side it has this relief so that goes on and then what happens if we push our pin through that hole there you can see there's them reliefs can you see there's the release there and that falls into there that locks so basically when you stick a sprocket on the end of this or whatever drive you want you can then rotate this inner row and that is it believe it or not that is the only drive now you can see that this shaft and this rotor are concentric they spin together not a problem you know what i mean it's the housing that's eccentric you can see that this is off to one side you heard the fucking wind it's terrible uh, you can see that this housing is eccentric it's off center if i put you bang on center there you can see that we're off center and then what you have is you have this outer rotor um, this section now all this has been EDM'd so wire eroded basically or not EDM'd wire eroded so this has not been cut by a milling machine or anything like this is literally been cut by a XY um, wire eroder so basically they just nibble away at whatever profile they need to the outside is surface ground these are all hardened tool steel and then basically you slip this outer rotor in like so now they're both allowed to spin and if you have any shit in there you can see how it's locking up there's just bits of crap but that's how it works you can see that there is um five recesses on the outer and then there's basically this four uh out of the rotor how the out the outer the outer rotor the rotor housing um and you can see on the inner row the actual rotor that we're rotating you can see there's four so basically they're always out of count um so four to five rotation wise so as you rotate this you can see that it locks in each one but there's always this odd one where it passes between you'll see that that tooth there will go around to there and then meet up to the next one like so so there's a resonance a four to five resonance between these two so I don't know which one's going to work best. I've got a paint marker here. So if I dot that rotor and then that one, that's quite clear, I think. Is that clear? Yeah, that's clear. So you can see that we're, we're lined up there. 
and then as we rotate the inner rotor will race it see the outer rotor is turning slower than the inner as you can see it's catching up and we're back to equal again you notice that the in, as in relation to the uh, mounting holes in the plate so this is basically the closing plate this just goes on top and just closes the whole thing up but how does this pump oil well what happens is fucking hell, if you get it in bloody shot is that you will draw oil up into here which comes into this passage you can see that there that comes into that passage then the pump rotates so now we're hitting this bridge this bridge at the top and the oil has to sit in between these two rotors because um, it's being squished in as you can see that this entire cavity fills up um, and then as it pushes around like that now oh let me get it right now what we have is we have a vessel in here of stored oil you can see it's got a bottom now this oil is now sat here and then when it starts to close round it opens up at the bottom if you can see that and then what it does is is it squishes it out this volume here is getting really really small and it squishes it completely out every time it squishes it out as it comes round it opens up another void here and this is what provides a pumping action is the fact is it's drawn in through here and then pumps right right back out the back like so so as you spin 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 now um, when I was going on about uh, oil pumps and all the rest of it and magnetic drain plugs and stuff you can imagine the fucking mess you will get into um, if a bit of shit gets caught between these rotors these are pretty much touching and when they get hot obviously all this expands and the clearances are fuck all you can see we've got a three point contact there's a point there a point there and a point there we are very very close to this rotor there's fuck all room in there uh, literally you would be lucky to get a, uh, a 10 micron feeler gauge in there and uh, yeah so you know big chunks and shit and all the rest of it that's what the screen is for the screen is to stop big chunks like that however this doesn't mean that this pump won't pump big chunks of shit big chunks of shit can get in here can literally sit in the void here and then there straight back out again it, it gets pumped out it doesn't mean that um, this pump will not pump big pieces of shit it's just that there is a good chance that these big pieces of shit like if you had a big piece of shit here that was too big to get down into that hole at that moment when it gets squished there it get trapped in the pump and then it is going to literally squish the shit out of it and stall the engine and fuck your pump up but basically as you can see very expensive piece of kit to make uh, EDM um, EDM I keep on saying EDM uh, wire eroding is not cheap it is not a cheap process especially for mass manufacturing so um, yeah you know uh, not a very cheap process uh, ground shafts uh, are quite basic and all this there's quite a lot of grinding and stuff going on um, casting this aluminium housing is fucking peanuts they don't care about that uh, the boring again is uh, accurate process just like any kind of line boring or boring or whatever um, it's literally these two sections here um, you can measure with a feeler gauge how much play you have and you can see that these are fuckers to get together um, such a tight fit 